Good evening, everybody. Hi, how are you doing? Welcome to the class. My name is Daryl, and uh, these opening Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, these opening sessions are just to get everybody oriented and, and set up, uh, take all the mystery out of this class. Um, we want to make this class as, as straightforward and clear as possible. So uh, you know, we're just going to do as much as we can to give you information and, and mystery out of this. So um, these, these live sessions are gonna happen on Mondays. Uh, I choose the time, I just have to choose them arbitrarily. I know that everybody can't always make it uh, you know, to the time that I pick, but we record these sessions. And so the recording is up shortly after the, the live session happens. And if you can't attend live, then we ask that you come back sometime during the week and watch the recording. So you have until Sunday night to watch the recording. So if you ever can't make it live, know that the uh, recording is there. Also, uh, it, it sort of eliminates the need for you to take notes. You know, if you're worried about missing something or anything, know that this is recorded. If you ever need to, to check up on what I said about how to do a, a particular assignment or anything like that, you can always go back and you can check, you know, uh, the recording and it's, um, it's streamed off of YouTube. So you can jump around. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You could just jump to a particular point in the, in the recording if you want to uh, catch up on something or anything. But um, these, these live sessions basically begin at the beginning of the week and we kind of try to lay out um, as best we can a workflow for you. We know as online students, you all are gonna to have to figure out your own way of getting through the material. The assignments open up on a Monday you have all week to work on them. They're due on Sunday nights. And when you work on them, it's up to you. But uh, instead of, you know, trying to get it all done at once and then having the rest of the week to yourself or trying to wait until the weekend and get it all done on the weekend, we highly recommend that you do a certain amount each day that you just uh, sort of start to block off in your schedule a certain amount of time that is your study time. Because an online student has a real tough time getting your work habits going. And we know that the rest of your life is just gonna keep pinging away at your study life. You know, that many of you work jobs, some of you work two jobs, some of you are watching kids, some of you are in the army. You know, you guys are, are doing very, very active lives while you're going to school. And that makes protecting your, your study time even more important. And, uh, we're going to help you best we can, but uh, it's up to you to figure out what works for you and, and what your study habits should be. But we highly recommend that you do a certain amount every day rather than trying to do it all at once. Uh, that all at once thing, you know, is, is, is sort of a, a disaster waiting to happen. Um, so I want to uh, just talk about the system and, and get you a little bit oriented uh, today. We talk about the reading. There's uh, two books for this class. And um, I want, there are going to be readings each week. So I want to talk about that a little bit. I want to talk about the discussion assignment. It's the first assignment. And uh, the, uh, the main assignment this week, which is um, um, called uh, TED Talks Analysis. And I'll, I'll go into that in detail as well. Uh, also know that this week's schedule is a little bit different. Uh, I just told you what the normal schedule for every full sale class is. Activities open up on a Monday and they close on a Sunday. But this week incorporates Thanksgiving, which is the official holiday. And while being online, it doesn't mean that we can tell you to work or not work. It does mean that we need to incorporate an extra day in it because uh, the holiday is being uh, celebrated. So this week's only all the activities are due on Monday night. Now, if, if uh, your schedule is normal, uh, then it's best to try to get it done by Sunday anyway to stay in the regular pattern. But know that nothing is due this Sunday night because of the Halloween or because of the November Thanksgiving uh, activity. Uh, you know, you, you'll be off on, on Thursday and maybe you'll be out shopping like crazy on Friday. I doubt if any of us are going to participate in that. But you know, the, the holiday weekend does upset your schedule. So we are accommodating that by having the due date for this week only be on Monday night. And so I'm still going to open up all of next week's material on Monday morning. 
at midnight, uh, next, you know, at, after Sunday at midnight, and I'm still going to have a, um, uh, a session on Monday night to cover the work, work the week two material. So we're going to keep everything else on the schedule. It's just going to be that the due date moves from Sunday to Monday night. I wanted to talk about that. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the software we're using here, Zoom. Um, until earlier this year, probably most of us had never heard of it, and now we see it everywhere. Uh, I end up Zooming with my family. Uh, I'm going to have a Zoom on Thanksgiving instead of going back to Kentucky. So um, it's probably familiar to most of us. And it's mostly for video conferencing. Uh, we have the video uh, cameras enabled. I've turned mine on if you want to watch me lecture. I don't recommend it. I'm not very pretty. Uh, but what you're seeing is my desktop. You're hearing my voice and seeing the desktop. And we found that that is the most uh, productive way to do these lectures. So uh, I'm going to run through some slides. Sometimes I'll dump out of slides and go straight into my uh, web browser and, and we'll look at the FSO platform live and I'll do some homework and do some activities, et cetera. But uh, that's what's being recorded, that, that the desktop that you're seeing and my voice. Uh, we're interactive. I've got all the mics turned off, but I can turn the mics on and off. So I'm going to uh, find out who's here in a moment. So you're going to get everybody else a chance to meet each other. Now, you do not have to be on camera. Uh, you do not have to configure anything. Um, there is a there's an option in the software for a default photo, uh, still avatar, uh, instead of just a blank space. And, and that's a nice thing to have uh, if you want to set that up. But for the most part, um, this software just allows you to feed in and, and uh, watch this as a one-way cast. That's how we do it. But we do have uh, abilities for uh, input. Um, Everybody's got a camera. Everybody's got a microphone. Some of you are connected by telephone. Some of you are watching on your phones. If you're watching on your phones on the, uh, the mobile software, it doesn't necessarily have all the same features as the desktop does. Um, sometimes you can see the, uh, the, the shared screen, but you cannot see the video, uh, video webcams and, and whatnot. But uh, if you want to talk, you have the ability to uh, you know, request my attention and I can unmute you. Uh, we also have a chat box. So if, the, if you can find the chat box, sometimes you have to go to the interface and open things up to see them. Um, but uh, there is a chat box where everybody can uh, put in information as well. And you can ask me questions. Now, if I get going on a lecturing and uh, I get off on a tangent, sometimes I'm, I, I, don't ex I don't see a question uh, so if, if I'm ignoring you, just keep getting at my attention. You can unmute yourselves and shout out. So uh, even though I have the microphones turned off, that's mainly for the video recording. So we get a good clean recording. But if you need to ask a question, if you need to interject, uh, feel free to unmute your mic and, and uh, a shout out. Uh, I want to use the chat box right now just to see where everybody's at. We have people from all over the country, sometimes people all over the world. Um, so if you can, I'd like you to go to the chat box and just type in there where you're at right now. I know a lot of people have different hometowns than where they're living right now or whatever, but it's like wherever you're at right now, let's just see where we have, what we have represented here. We've got, uh, I see New York and, uh, Hialeah, Florida, Palestine, Texas, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Wisconsin, Virginia, Palestine, Palestine. Uh, okay. Northampton, uh, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, two PAs. Um, so uh, not as much West Coast, but uh, a pretty good representing of the United States. That's kind of cool. So if you guys uh, want to participate, if, if your mics are mixed up and you can't talk, you can use the chat box to uh, input your information and so forth. So uh, uh, I will also at certain points stop and ask for questions. So if you can't ask a question just in time when you wish, uh, know that you will have a chance uh, later on to, to catch up or or whatnot. So if you if you have a question and and uh, it, it, it's hard to interject, then just write it down and, and ask it later, and uh, we'll get to everything. So I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to be heard. But this software um, it's fairly ubiquitous. It works on all platforms. Uh, it seems to be fairly robust. We try not to push it too hard, 
but uh, we can do fun things with it and it allows us to be interactive. As you go on to later classes at Full Sail, you're gonna find uh, really in interesting uses of it in the studio where the teachers will take it and set it up in front of a, a mixing board or out of, at a keyboard or at a camera setup and you'll actually have uh, you know, almost hands-on displays uh, with lab demonstrations and things like that. So um, uh, we were trying to use uh, Zoom to make this as interactive a classroom as we can. Uh, our FSO platform is very interactive, allows you to contact us a lot of ways to get help. Uh, and we have lots of different things that we can post along the way. We don't just post assignment in and of itself. We post different videos and, and uh, tips and, and other things. So. Uh, as we move along, we're, uh, we're trying to give you help. But uh, the Zoom platform uh, is something that we've been using since about April. Before that, we used uh, some other business conferencing software. Uh, and uh, this stuff uh, seems to be pretty robust. So we're, uh, we're hoping to make new and interesting uses of it. Uh, I've also been using it to do office hours. Uh, in addition to uh, you know, uh, I, I, my office hours are, are posted. You can probably just throw them out because I'm, I'm available almost any time you want. But um, uh, occasionally I will post uh, Zoom office hours, which just means that I'm going to turn on my camera while I'm working and anybody who wants to click in and talk face to face, we can do that as well. It's not any different than using a FaceTime camera on an iPhone, uh, but it, it makes conversations a little more uh, personable. So uh, I've been talking about myself. My name is Daryl Moore. I'm uh, a real old guy. I'm an actual gray beard. Um, I've been uh, teaching a long time. I've been in the video industry a long time. Um, I've uh, written a few books. Uh, I've, I worked in the home video industry in the 80s, creating original programming for uh, you know, uh, uh, video rental stores and, and so forth. And that's also how I got involved in computers because I always had such low budgets for the programs that I was creating that I was wanting to try to get an edge. And um, I started using Macintosh computers very early on to do video and became uh, pretty adept at that. And uh, by the 90s, I was uh, teaching at Columbia College uh, computer graphics that almost didn't exist at that point and um, doing interesting things. And, um, um, Around 2006, I got a call from Full Sail, asked me to come down here. Uh, I've been teaching digital video for about 10 years or so. And a couple of years ago, I switched over to this class, uh, Creative Presentation. It's kind of the same thing, only we're just not using as advanced tech. Instead of always telling stories with video, we're using simpler tools. And nowadays, everyone is so well equipped with tools you know, um, I know that you're not getting your laptops yet, and it's a source of, you know, consternation for, you know, the students in the first couple of months. But the regular gear that you have is so sophisticated. And believe me, I've gone through the iterations of computers from the very beginning, from 1984 on. And uh, so they've been pretty low tech. And right now, they're, everything's pretty sophisticated. So anybody who's even got an old phone, an old smartphone, has a great microphone, probably has a really great camera, and can do lots of things. So we can talk you in, talk you through doing lots of stuff. So um, this, this class is pretty much about storytelling, about convincing people, using uh, uh, your voice as a, a way to connect with people. And uh, it, it, it really connects with a lot of what I've been teaching all my life in terms of filmmaking and storytelling. So I really enjoy it. And I really like working with new students and so forth. Uh, I, I give out my cell phone number because uh, I'm not at school anymore. I basically have been teaching from home since this uh, um, pandemic crisis has happened. And so um, rather than giving my voicemail uh, at school, which is published in the system, and you can call it, but I often forget to call and get my voicemail. So I actually don't recommend that you call my my official school voicemail number because I sometimes don't use that. But I'm happy for you to call my cell phone if you want to call me anytime. 
And most specifically, I'm happy for you to have my cell phone if you want to put it in your system and text me whenever you like. I know there are an awful lot of times where you're working and, you, and you'd like to get an answer and rather having to wait a half hour or an hour until somebody gets back to you with a, an asynchronous message, you'd really just like the answer. And it's really uh, easy for me to, I've got my phone with me at all times. If you're bothering me, you know, I can ignore your phone, ignore you, but for the most part, I can, get, I can respond to a text message immediately and keep you going on your way. So I'm happy for you to use that route to uh, ask me any questions you like. And don't ever feel like you're impinging by asking questions. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to answer questions. And there's no question too small, you know, just ask it. Uh, so I wanna be available for that. And uh, um, that's what I'm all about here. So I wanted to let everybody know that about me. So now that I've introduced myself and, uh, and you know, uh, you, you guys heard my music playing. There's probably not a lot from, from uh, this decade. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an old fart, but I, I still love rock and roll. Uh, but uh, I know um, everything about computers. I know what you guys are working on and I can answer pretty much any question you have. So uh, don't feel uh, uh, shy in asking about anything to do with the class or uh, getting on with your studies at all. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. So now that you know who I am, I wanna find out who you guys are. Uh, this is your opening day. So um, we're gonna use this technology to the best we can to um, uh, introduce each other. Uh, so I'm going to call on people. I've got the I've got a listing of everybody who's here, and I can call on people one at a time. I'm going to um, call you out, uh, and you can unmute your mic. You can turn on your camera or not. It's up to you. I don't really ask you to turn on your camera if you don't feel comfortable with it. But if you want to, um, probably most of the people don't have their the uh, the camera um, panel open and are watching it. So even if you did have your camera, turn your camera on, a lot of people won't see it. But um, when I call you, I want you to introduce yourself in 15 seconds. I'm going to ask you to answer four questions in 15 seconds. Now, this is not a gotcha. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the four questions. I want you to say, what is your name? Where are you from? What are you here to study? Because in this opening class, all full sale students are combined together. So no matter, we have dozens of different uh, uh, specialties that people can study. Audio engineering, film, uh, video creation, um, video game design, um, business, uh, sports marketing, you know, a huge range of different uh, um, uh, uh, specialties, but everybody's mixed together. So this is a great chance to network and make friends with people who you might not see when later on when you get into your own particular uh, field. So what are you here to study? And then finally, tell me two words that define your professional vision. So like just a, a little quick Rorschach about yourself. Uh, if you had to describe yourself in two words, what, what would they be? So I'm gonna go down the list. I'm gonna call on people and give you a chance. Uh, Adam Kane. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Adam, I'm from New York, studying uh, music production. And uh, two words that describe my professional vision is um, diverse and original. Excellent, thank you Adam. Uh, Audrey Robillard. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you sound good. Hey, okay. <laughs> hey, uh, so my name is Aubrey. Uh, I am in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I am studying the computer animation. And two words that describe my professional vision. Uh, I guess very whimsical and very creative. I, I don't, that's the best I can do right now. <laughs> All right, well, that works for me. Uh, no. Dominic Cardone. Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Dom. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm studying sports management and marketing. Um, 
two words to describe me, I'd say I'm very proactive and resourceful. Excellent. Uh, ooh. Gvas Transcriber. And I'm sorry I messed up your name. Jeevas? Um, try to ask it again. Jeevas Transcriber. All right, well, I'm just going to go on. Uh, Jasmine Coburn. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Jasmine Coburn. I'm from Palestine. Yeah. I'm from Palestine, Texas. I'm studying Bachelor of Science, the game arts. And... Um, Two, uh, that's a hard one, the fourth one. Um, hmm. I'll let you pass. Well, obviously the creativity. But, um, okay, thank you. <laughs> sure. You think if something comes to you, you can put it in the chat. Uh, Leo Damas. What's up, everyone? My name is Leo. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida, originally. Um, I'm studying uh, digital cinematography. And two words that describe your professional, my professional vision is resourceful and creative. Excellent. That's great. Uh, Lionel Fisher. Can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Cool. My name is Lionel Fisher, AKA Lukey. I'm from Virginia. I'm currently study, studying game art, and two words that describe my pro professional uh, would be creativity and fun. Excellent. Paige Denton. Hello, uh, my name is Paige. I'm from Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm studying computer animation, and I would say uh, two words that describe me are hardworking and committed. Excellent. Uh, Richard DeYoung. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Richard Dion. I'm from Leland, North Carolina. I'm studying uh, digital marketing. And I've been struggling to find the two words since we started this. Um, uh, I, I'm still struggling with it. I'll, I'll throw it in the chat if I can think of anything. Still struggling sounds good to me. Yeah, two words, still struggling. <laughs> uh, and finally, Sean Kaysan. Hey, you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, um, Sean, I'm from Wisconsin. Um, I'm studying music production and two words that describe me are ambitious and creative. Excellent, thanks. Thanks everybody, that was good. You guys uh, um, seem like you're a nice diverse group. I just finished a, a, a batch of students last month that were pretty sharp. So I have a feeling that this group is gonna be a very good as well. Um, the classes seem to have a, a vibe to them as they go through the, the, uh, the year. And the end of the year classes seem to be uh, kind of electric. So I think we're gonna have a good class this year. So uh, what do we expect from you guys? Well, we know that you are entry students. We don't expect you to, to know anything completely. Uh, the, the, the material we asked you to do, uh, and plus we haven't given you the software or the, uh, the hardware, right? So uh, we're going to make sure that the assignments we give you are things that you can complete on your own. And mostly what we're looking for are your ideas. We're not looking for finished polished work. Now we are going to ask you to create multimedia. We are going to ask you to record your voice and uh, add pictures and video and, and uh, uh, so forth. So we will be creating presentations here and I will give you options to, uh, uh, for tools to use. Um, and um, depending on 
your familiarity with any, with any particular uh, software, you're free to use what you like. Uh, we don't demand that you use any particular software, but we're going to make sure you have plenty of options. And uh, if you're not familiar with any of this software, we're going to give you some options that are pretty easy to use, pretty easy to jump in from the beginning. But we, we don't expect you to be fully formed, but we do expect you to participate, to stay involved, and to let us know what's going on. One of the most important things about online students is that unless you tell us you're having a problem, we can't know. If we were in a live classroom and you were struggling, I might see the quizzical look on your face and come up and ask you if there's anything I could do. But if we're all at a distance from one another, Unless you let me know that you're struggling, unless you know, let me know that you need another explanation uh, of what you just read, et cetera, I can't offer that help. I have the help and I'm happy to offer it, but you have to come forward and you have to stay in touch with us. Uh, we also know that in terms of being brand new students, your schedule is gonna go to hell. That as much as you wanna have everything done on time, as much as you wanna meet uh, our deadlines and so forth, that life is going to come at you. And we want you to just keep us involved in what's going on. Uh, one of the things that happens across the country is we've just had the craziest weather in the world in the last five years. You know, there, there are hurricanes down here in Florida. There are mountains going on fire in California. There's tornadoes ramaging across Missouri. There's uh, snowstorms in the Northwest. Um, in the Northeast, uh, everybody has crazy weather and we're just about to come into some winter. So um, if you know that you're gonna lose power or you know that you're gonna lose internet, let us know ahead of time. We can make arrangements for that. So while Full Sail is very deadline oriented and it's important that you meet your deadlines, we realize that this is a month one class and you guys are just beginning to form these habits. So we're gonna practice a lot of forgiveness here but what we want is for you to tell us ahead of time what's going on with you so we can make allowances. You know, we'll make allowances after the fact, but after the fact, it tends to sound like an excuse when before, the, if you tell us that you know that something's going to happen, then that's you being proactive. And that's what we want. We want you to let us know what's happening with you so we can take scheduling around the, uh, uh, the crazy things that go on in your life. Now, what should you guys expect from us? Well, you should expect us to be available. You should expect us to answer your messages in a timely fashion. If you send me email or you send me messages on FSO, you should expect to get an answer within half a day at the least, and most likely within a half hour or an hour. And again, uh, I prefer that you send me text messages and you'll just get answers immediately. But uh, you, you should be able to, uh, feel entitled to, to responses to your questions. Now, I'm not an ATM machine. I'm not gonna be available all the time. If you call me 4 a.m. in the morning, I may not answer, and that's my choice. But um, you, you could try. Uh, there are times when I'm up at 4 a.m. and I will answer an email, so you know it has happened. So, um, But your expectation should just be that I will just generally be available. Um, you should also expect timely feedback from us. All of our classes are, uh, all of our coursework is set up on top of each other. So that what you do in week one informs what you do in week two and so forth. So you have to know how well you did on the assignment that you just finished so you can go forward. And therefore it's important on me to get you uh, gr uh, grades and feedback back on those assignments as early as possible. Now, the official full sale policy on grading is that if you turn in an assignment on a Sunday night, that it has to be graded by that Friday. But that's, uh, that, that's not good enough for us in the uh, creative presentation department. Uh, our official policy in the creative presentation is anything turned in by Sunday has to be graded by Wednesday. But that's still not good enough for me. Uh, I pretty much try to get everything graded back to you by Monday or Tuesday so that you know how you're doing and you can go forward and you can plan your week out. So expect timely grading. Know that life is going to hit me as well as it hits you. So 
you can't always expect to get everything graded on Monday night, on a Monday, uh, the day after you turn it in. But for the most part, you're going to find that that's what I commit to and that what I try to do. And, and it, it helps you to go forward in your planning. Um, as you were going through some of the preliminary material this morning uh, in, in uh, going in uh, a, looking at the FSO platform, I'm sure most of you click through a section called professionalism. It basically is just a link to the student manual. But uh, a, an interesting thing about that is that that is actually 10% of your grade for the entire course. And that is the full sale system. It's called global professionalism. And every single class at full sale has professionalism as 10% of the final grade. This is our way of turning you into working professionals. We don't want you just to be proficient at the software that we're teaching you or the uh, how, to, how to use film cameras, et cetera. We want you to make, we want to turn you into something, someone that people in the creative industry want to hire. We want to give you the life skills that's going to take for you to get hired. And so in addition to teaching you the creative art that you've come here to study, we have a, 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 a through line in all of our courses that teaches you the life and job skills that you need to become a valuable creative working professional. And that starts with this professionalism uh, grade. Essentially, each month as you come in, you get 100%. And if you act professionally throughout that entire month and there are no infractions, then that's what you get. You get 100% uh, of that. But each time you miss a deadline, each time you're rude to someone, each time you say you'll do something and you don't do it, each time you work, you do something in a way that would be unprofessional in the working world, we take demerit points off of that score. Now, this is not really something that affects month one students. You guys are so eager to be here and our, uh, uh, our, our standards are, are, are slack enough that uh, most of you are gonna have no trouble at all getting through this in uh, get, keeping the full professionalism score. Uh, but we keep an eye on you. We make sure that as you're talking to your classmates in the discussion board, you aren't rude or trollish. Uh, you aren't snapping at people or treating people with disrespect. We want, we want you to treat all of your classmates as colleagues, as co-equals with equal respect, the same way as you would be in the working world. We want you to respect deadlines. We want you to uh, make sure that you do everything that you say you're going to do. And this, in the long run, in adhering to these principles, in us treating you like working professionals for the 30 months that you're here as students, by the time you graduate, you will have the work habits of a working professional and you will become the kind of person that people want to hire. And that is an ethos that goes with the full sale degree. You're going to find that in the world out there, there are places that want to hire full sale people because full sale people know how to work and other people don't have those skills. So professionalism is part of that. I don't need to belabor it much more just to know that as you go through the 30 months here, you're going to have classes and resume building and interviewing and, and maintaining your, your brand through social media and how to be and act like a professional. And all of that is essential training, just the same as teaching you how to, how to manipulate uh, 3D graphics or program or video games. Uh, this course is based on two different books written by the same person. And all of our books come from the same source, a place called O'Reilly uh, Books. It used to be called Safari Books. I haven't updated the slide, but uh, O'Reilly is a web, a private website that we have um, a license agreement with. Now, if you went to O'Reilly on your own, they would let you have access to their books, but you'd have to give them a credit card. You have access to all of the books at O'Reilly Books through a license that we have set up from Full Sail to O'Reilly. And your school credentials, your school email and password are the credentials that will allow you to get in and access those books. 
There are over 100,000 books that are, books that are all about the creative arts, about photography, cinematography, audio production, web design, um, uh, video game programming. Uh, that's what they specialize, the same thing that we teach and uh, their library is unparalleled. So all of the textbooks that you're gonna get from Full Sail come from O'Reilly Books. And um, one difficulty is that it's a website and uh, right now you pretty much have to access it through a web browser. O'Reilly Books has a, uh, a mobile app that allows you to download the books from their website to the app and, and have it on your phone or mobile device so that you can read offline. However, the two books that we have licensed from uh, O'Reilly aren't available for that program. We're pretty steamed about it and we're working with them on it. But uh, we wanna make sure everyone has access to these books. Uh, let me dump out of uh, the slide book right now and show you what this looks like. So here is the FSO interface that we're all using. And uh, here F 1.1 is where you guys signed up for this lecture. And incidentally, once this lecture is fully, uh, is done and, and, and it's fully recorded, the recording of it is going to be linked right here at the bottom. So if you ever need to come back and check where the, uh, uh, or check any part of the video, you just come back to where you signed up for the, this, this week's uh, Zoom session and the video will be available at the bottom and you'll be able to watch it all week. So the 1.2 activity involves the reading. And so we have two books that we're using, Resonate and Slideology, and this week we're assigning five chapters from Resonate. One, two, three, four, and seven. And the link to get to the O'Reilly site is right here, uh, the Resonate book. And here, the, here's how you access it. So the book is set up really uh, to look really great on a, uh, a, a desktop web browser. It doesn't do so well with a mobile device. And we are aware of that. And we've been working with them uh, to try to get mobile versions. Now, the reason, uh, because we haven't been able to get as uh, much service from O'Reilly on these two books as we like, and these are books that we need for this course. What we have done is we've made the books available to you as PDF downloads. So if you don't want to deal with the O'Reilly website, you can download the book itself as a PDF and, and watch it on your computer or your phone and read offline. So uh, we're doing that. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's, it's the best we can come up with right now. So. Um, uh, we have links for both the, uh, the Resonate book and the Slideology book on the, uh, the weeks that you have assignments for them, and you can get the books there. But the first thing I want everyone to do is to make sure that you're able to access the O'Reilly website. And you would do that by clicking on Resonate. So on this linked word here, Resonate, if you click on this word and it, it, it trans, uh, it, it links you into the O'Reilly website, then everything's cool. If you're having trouble or they ask for credentials or they're asking for you to put in a credit card or sign up or anything, uh, then contact tech support. Contact me or tech support. It's better to contact tech support because they can talk you through fixing the credentials. But essentially, if the credentials are messed up, uh, we want to be able to um, make sure that uh, you all have access to the O'Reilly books. So uh, whether you read them on the O'Reilly website or through the, the PDF, uh, you do need to deal with the reading each week. And so uh, back to this, these two books are called Resonate and Slideology. They were both written by the same person, Nancy Duarte. Nancy Duarte is an art director who's done a lot of freelance work. And so in the course of going to different meetings, trying to uh, get different jobs and work with different clients and things, she went to, to an awful lot of business meetings, like we all have in uh, the 90s, the 2000s and so forth. 
And every time she'd go into a business meeting, she'd notice that pretty much standard practice, people had gotten into this habit that when you run a business meeting, somebody runs it with PowerPoint. And what she noticed was that even though she was going to meetings that were all full of creative people, art directors and, you know, artists and illustrators and, and uh, you know, everyone that was involved in the creative industries, that they were using PowerPoint in the same silly, stupid way that regular businesses do. That uh, someone had written down whatever they were supposed to say, and then and, uh, they'd run the slides, and the slides would be whatever the person was supposed to say. So the person would say it as if you need to watch them reading a script. And um, it just slowed everything down. And Nancy Duarte couldn't figure out why a bunch of creatives, a bunch of artists, couldn't figure out how to make more interesting slides. She thought the problem was just the slides. So she wrote this book called Slideology, and it's pretty much an art uh, design book about how to make more interesting slides. And uh, we're gonna read chapters from that, not this week, but next week and the week after. And uh, it has interesting information on uh, for us on how to make your slides more effective, how to make them more interesting, how to help them do their job. But that book was a huge hit. And almost as soon as it came out, she realized that she hadn't told the whole story. She just told people how to make slides. But the problem is not in that they're making the wrong slides, it's that they're using the software in the wrong way. So uh, shortly after she wrote um, Slideology, she wrote Resonate. This is the second book she wrote, but it's really the first book you need to read because here she tells the complete story of how to make a creative presentation. And uh, she goes through the production process. She goes through the steps that you need to go through in order to uh, make a presentation that fulfills all needs. And um, most of you know that if you've seen a lot of PowerPoints, they're mostly just boring. And there isn't a reason for that other than that people are using the software wrong. So I'm gonna give you the big secret here right now. I'm just gonna give it all away. And it's, the problem is not PowerPoint. You're gonna hear us talk an awful lot about PowerPoint. And incidentally, you're gonna hear us talk about PowerPoint <coughs> sometimes when we might mean the word presentation, as if they're interchangeable. In the same way that someone might say tissue or Kleenex. Um, that's just because they're the, the big dog in the industry that, uh, you know, everybody who makes presentations pretty much makes PowerPoints. Uh, PowerPoint is terrific software, but it isn't meant to make the entire process. It's only meant to make slides. PowerPoint is only slide making software. And I want you to kind of drop that as a distinction. You should not be making slides first. Slides are the very last step in making a presentation. First, you have to figure out who you're talking to. First, you have to figure out what you want to say. Then you have to create your entire uh, speech or res whatnot. Then you, if you're, if you're pre-recording it, you have to record it. And it's only after you've gotten the audio finished that you should even start with the slide or begin on the slides. But most people, when they hear that they have to make a presentation, they just think, oh, well, I'll open PowerPoint. PowerPoint makes presentations for me. Well, the problem is PowerPoint doesn't make any decisions for you. PowerPoint simply creates slides. So what happens when you are told to make a presentation, you don't think about it, and you just open up PowerPoint? You click on PowerPoint, it opens up a, a dialog box it asks you to choose a template. So you choose some colors and fonts and, you know, styles and so forth. You choose a look for the background. And once you've done that, it dumps you into slide one and you're staring at the software interface that's a blank slide one and it's saying, feed me. So before you've ever thought about what your presentation is going to be, suddenly you're asked to do slide one. And as soon as you finish slide one, it, it shows you slide two it's saying feed me as well. So PowerPoint is terrific software, 
if you know what those slides should be. But if you haven't thought yet about the rest of the presentation, don't open it up. It's the tail at the end of the dog. Do not start PowerPoint first. That's the big secret. If you get anything out of this class, that's the way you should work. If you are told to make a presentation and you open PowerPoint first, you're doing it wrong. Stop that. Um, you're also going to hear us talk about PowerPoint a lot. You're going to you're going to hear us uh, uh, beat it like a dog and pet it like a dog. We love software, we love PowerPoint, and we hate PowerPoint. And the issue there is that PowerPoint's been around for so long, and they keep adding features to it. And Microsoft has stuffed so much stuff into PowerPoint that they can't make it readily apparent anymore. So now there's hidden stuff and there's, uh, it's almost too complicated because there are things that you need to know that Microsoft doesn't tell you. My software doesn't seem to come with manuals anymore. And so there are a lot of ways of working in PowerPoint that we have to tell you that are kind of like hidden lore. And I guess that's why you guys have to go to school, you know, to, to learn how to use the software that you can't use on your own. But, um, we like PowerPoint because it's so powerful, but it's poorly designed in that uh, there are hidden features that are not apparent until somebody tells you the trick. And we will tell you the trick later on in the month. So moving on, uh, Nancy Duarte has a fixation on presentations because she's discovered that this is the way the modern world works, that nowadays, that if you have a problem, people have to get answers fast. And presentations are designed to cut through things really quickly. Another great thing about presentations is that they're meant to be short. They're meant to be right to the point and not padded. You know, uh, you guys might have gotten assignments in high school and you were told to make, you know, so many slides or do so much stuff and, and, and you were just filling it up because you were given that as a, as a grade. But in truth, a presentation should only go on as long as it needs to and the shorter the better. Now there's too short, there's too short in that it doesn't set anything up, it doesn't clarify anything. But it shouldn't be full of extraneous information, it shouldn't be padded, it shouldn't have multiple sections, it shouldn't deal with multiple ideas. A presentation is meant to set up and clarify what's ahead of us. So if you're in the business world and you have a problem, you usually schedule a meeting among interested parties, you know, an hour in a conference room, and the person leading that meeting is gonna start off with a PowerPoint. And that PowerPoint is not meant to run more than five or 10 minutes. And all it does is it set up, sets up the issue so you could then have a fruitful conversation thereafter. Presentation is meant to clarify and put everyone on the same page. It's not, uh, sometimes you need to convince people and you might have to go a little bit longer to do that. But for the most part, you're, you're, you're creating change. You're moving people into a, a, a decision point range. And that's why power presentations are very powerful. They require the kind of people who can do the kind of thinking that can clarify the situations, that can reach decisions, that can make things happen fast. In the creative industry and in all of the creative industry, this is why everyone here at Full Sail takes creative presentation no matter what uh, discipline you have. If you're in audio, you're thinking, why do I need this class? Well, if you're in audio, you work in an industry that moves fast and has to make decisions. Oftentimes there are marketing decisions, sometimes uh, you know, even technical decisions that have to be dealt with in an audio studio. And figuring out those problems involves creative people getting together and having a consensus. And that can't happen unless someone sets up that meeting and clarifies the issues. And that's what presentations are all about. They're about ways that people use to talk to each other. And that's why we're making this the very first class here at Full Sail. We're giving you a vocabulary so that you can use this in all the classes you have going down the pike. And it won't be that people are judging you on your presentation ability. That's what we're doing this month. 
But once you have this ability, you're just gonna use that to present your ideas. So when you have classes in other topics, the way that you will express yourself is through a presentation. And you better have your skills down because that's what you're doing instead of writing a paper. Uh, you're gonna have an English literacy class, but nobody's gonna ask you to write papers around here. They're gonna ask you to create a dynamic piece of media that explains what your ideas are. And that's what this is all about. That's what pre creative presentation is. Being able to explain yourself and make yourself heard and remembered for what you have to say. So how can we make that happen when all the presentations we've seen have been really boring? We've seen presentations that are just full of text. People are yelling on and on. <clears throat> the person who's talking doesn't do anything but say exactly what's on the slides. And you're wondering why you're looking at the slides or why is the person talking or why are you in this room? And each slide seems to be different. That's the horrible part that you're getting a lot of different information and it's just a lot of information that doesn't connect. Well, that's not the way we used to communicate. For thousands of years, men have talked to each other. And the way we've understood that we have to make ourselves understood is by telling stories. Facts alone don't make for an engaging presentation. If you're telling people information they need to know, you need to have to figure out how to put it in an exciting format that people are gonna remember. You need to tell a story. A good story is the basis of all powerful presentations. So that's what we're all about this month. We're all about figuring out what it is the information we need to convey and then how can we turn that into a story with media and drama that people are gonna be interested in and remember. And that's how you become a success successful presenter. That you're not just presenting facts that are isolated. You're telling a story that makes sense. A story that people will remember. A story that will get people engaged. So storytelling is the most effective way of letting people know information. And uh, this is something that we've discovered not just in the last year or two. It's something that's gone on for 100,000 years. This is how mankind survives. Uh, for the longest time, people had critical information that they needed to impart to the people around them. And sometimes your, even, your survival was at stake. And so your ability to tell that vital information in a way that people actually got it, actually remembered it, actually acted on it, was crucial. If not, people could die. So, you know, 100,000 years ago, people would, uh, you know, gather around the campfire and tell about vital information. And they'd have to not just lift it as facts and figures, but they'd have to tell a story. They'd have to keep people engaged. They'd have to make sure that people knew every vital aspect of this story. So, you know, the leader would gather around the story, around the fire, tell people, and he'd use drama, he'd use media, and that way people would remember it. And that's one of the things that we've kind of forgotten in this PowerPoint drudgery, is that in order for people to really care, you've got to tell them a story, you've got to provide them media and drama. And all those tools are at our fingertips now. We have with you know a smartphone, the ability to record audio and add music and audio effects and images and images and text and motion picture video and all this stuff. And that's what's going to make people interested. We've actually measured people watching things like, you know, data lists. And that information goes into a couple of places of the brain. But then when you ask people to, to recall it, they can't necessarily recall it because those particular areas of the brain don't connect. But when you add a story context and you add multimedia and drama to it, there are several different parts of the brain where uh, the um, information is stored. And that makes it easier to recall because the brain synapses are connecting to each other and they're remembering the information because of the emotion. And so the storytelling is what's going to make this actually sink in and be a, a memorable information that people can keep and act on. 
and our survival has depended on it for years. And you need to gain the skill. You need to gain the skill to tell stories. What do you need to tell a story? Very simple. You need a beginning, middle, and end. You need to create a context in which the information you're talking about connects. The beginning is where you lay out the circumstances. And this can be about anything. We're not talking about telling a fiction story here. We're talking about telling a story about anything, about information, about ordering pencils or creating video game levels or uh, labeling audio tapes. You have to create a context. The beginning is what is the issue? Where are, where are we at and what's going on? The middle is what are the complications? What has to be overcome? What is stopping us from doing X, Y, and Z? What are possible solutions? And the end is what do we, how do we fix it? How do we get out of there? And if you can create a, a story out of information, you can get people to a context where, uh, and especially in a, a, a business meeting, they're really, really ready to discuss solutions. Now, uh, the other thing we're gonna get from Nancy is the notion of the kind of slides that she thinks are most helpful in these kinds of presentations. So remember, we don't want the slide to tell the story. The slide is there to support the story we're telling. As the presenter, we use our voice, we use uh, our human connection to tell the story and to make people understand what we have to say. So what is the action of the slides? The slides is to help us understand what's being told to us. The slides are to enhance the story, are to enhance the audio. So you do not want to put lots of text information on a slide because then you're just asking people to read and think for themselves. You want to take that text information and speak it and speak it in a way that is engaging. Tell it in a way that starts to form a story that connects. So what do the slides do? The slides are gonna help us understand, put that in context. And most helpfully, we want slides that work in the moment. As we're listening to a particular part of the story, the image that we're seeing should be reflecting on what it is we're thinking, what decision we're uh, committing to memory right now. And so Nancy is going to promote a form of combination image quote slide that she thinks works best. And when I say quote, doesn't necessarily mean it's a famous quote. I know lots of you guys go crazy putting famous quotes from Einstein or whoever in your presentations because you've been told to. But a quote can simply be um, a part of a sentence that's pulled out. You know, nine out of 10 dentists recommend uh, this kind of gum. Anything can be a quote. So a quote just simply means uh, a short, pithy phrasing of what would be a larger thought. So instead of putting an entire paragraph of text in there, you're gonna come up with the, the five words that, he, that are the headline for that, then that's what people are gonna remember. And when you combine a quote with an image, you're actually refining it even further because the image helps people to understand the quote. Uh, let me give you an example. Here's a quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. This is said by Socrates. So this is as raw as you get. This is black text on a white background. There is nothing on this slide that helps you to understand this quote. You have to read this quote and you have to understand it all by yourself. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. Now, it's not impossible to understand this quote, but there are different interpretations you could have. There are different ways of thinking about it, depending on what I needed, what I wanted to do. And uh, without any additional information from me, it's not helpful. I mean, this could talk about education through the ages. 
if this is a quote from Socrates, Socrates is a Greek philosopher. So this is 3000 years old. If this is a 3000 year old quote, then obviously we're talking about education down through the ages. Well, not obviously. He said it at a moment in time and he may have been thinking about an urgency of the, the importance of education right now. So the way that you color the quote matters and the way that you make people interpret it matters. So by combining the image with the quote, you have the ability to, uh, ref to affect the way people understand the quote. So let's say I was talking about education today as a, a current issue, as a, uh, something of the importance in, in the world today. And I combined it with an image of third world kids under an underpass teaching themselves. Well, you're not thinking about education through the ages now. You're thinking about modern age, the modern era. You're thinking about world crisis. You're thinking about this is education that's needed to solve the problems of the world today. Because the, quote, the image colors the quote. I've chosen an image that makes you think about the now, about current, current events. And so that's my job as a creative artist to find the image that makes you interpret the quote in the way that I want you to interpret it. If I want you to think about education as the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel as a current event crisis, then this is the image I choose. Maybe that's not what I mean. Maybe I did want to think about education through the ages. Maybe I did want you to have a loftier sense of it. So maybe I might go back to the fact that it's from Socrates and pick a Renaissance painting of Socrates and combine the quote. Now suddenly the combination of this image and the quote does make it seem like we're talking about education through the ages. We have a Renaissance painting of a Greek philosopher and you're now thinking through the ages because the image colors the quote. Now for the most part, your number one task is going to be to know who your audience is and how you can affect them. How can you reach your audience with what you need to know? So I'm betting that my audience right now is not people who care about education as a modern crisis or education through the ages. You're people who are, are steeped in pop culture. You are people who want something that you can connect to that you, are, you know. And that's my job. My job is to find something. So if I look at this quote and I think about Socrates, I'm going to think, well, you guys don't really know Socrates, but maybe you know a character named Socrates from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So if I take a clip from that movie, Keanu Reeves' film, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, maybe because I know who my audience is, that you guys are pop culture kids, that we are connecting, that I make a bonding moment and we are looking at education in the same way, that we are looking at it through the lens of modern culture. Now, again, this is about me knowing who my audience is. I'm an old fart and you guys are all 19, so Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures from, from the 90s. Maybe you haven't seen that movie, but they just remade it. It came out this year. There's a, a third Bill and Ted movie, so it's, it's hip again. You know, everything I, I hold on to becomes hip again and 20 years later. So uh, it's about making cultural references that connect with an audience. And I have to know that my audience is culturally there. You know, if, if this was an audience of dentists, I wouldn't feel like I could make this Bill and Ted's in, uh, excellent adventure in joke. If this were an audience of, uh, you know, movie buffs, it would certainly connect. So it's my job as a creative artist to know who my audience is and what I can connect with them. What are the references that I can use that they will click with? What are the in jokes that I can tell that they'll know? You know, if you guys were all video game players and never watched movies, then this wouldn't have any effect at all either. You, wouldn't, you would never have seen it. Uh, there was never a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure video game. So um, that's part of what I need to know is 
who is my audience and what do they know? That's your job as well. So in the uh, uh, literature of storytelling, uh, telling a story is about the journey of the hero. The hero goes on an adventure and engages in the world and learns things. So you would think that if you're standing up in front of an audience telling them all this material that you're the hero in this regards, but you're not. You have to recognize that in terms of effective storytelling, uh, in this case, the audience is the hero. That when you are telling a story in your presentation and you want all of them to imagine that story and go on that journey in the back of their heads, they become the hero. They are the audience. The audience is receiving that information and imagining that they're going on that journey. You might even be talking directly about them yourself, but the audience, as they perceive it, have to be able to put themselves in those shoes and imagine going on that journey. And so as you talk to an audience, as you tell a tale like this, you want to use a lot of active verb language that uh, the audience can then uh, find useful in, 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 in going through these thoughts. And there actually is in uh, storytelling lore, a term for the person who engages the hero and sends him on his journey. And that's who you are. You are the mentor. The mentor is the person who guides a hero on his journey, gets them started. They don't always go to the end of the journey with them, but they get them started on their journey. And so your job as a mentor is to engage that audience and get them to take that first step to go out the door and start on the journey. And your language, the way that you spin the story, the way that you provide imagery for them to key in on as they're watching in the slideshow, that all determines whether or not you have a successful um, story that you're telling. And that's the journey that you're taking them on. That's your task as a creative artist. And this is definitely a creative venture. Uh, and it involves a lot of things. And these are things that all have to be figured out before you ever open up PowerPoint. You have to figure out who am I talking to? You have to figure out what is my story? You have to figure out where do you want this audience to be led to? What is the journey? Where are they going to? Uh, and all of these things are the things that we're going to learn how to figure out ahead of time in pre-production planning so that we don't uh, just get lost in making slides. We're all going to create a presentation this week, this month. Not this week. No one's doing a presentation this week. Let me take that back. Uh, the plan is that this week you're going to see a lot of presentations and you're going to write reviews of them. So you're writing a paper this week in which you're, you're talking about reviews, you're talking about presentations that you've seen. And that's going to give you a good vocabulary. And then next week, I'm going to talk about the presentation that you're going to do for the rest of the month. You're going to create a presentation. And next week, you're going to plan it. You're not going to actually start the presentation. You're going to do all the prep work. So you're going to do the research. You're going to do the thinking. You're going to do the advanced uh, setup so that in week three, you actually create the presentation. You're going to create an entire presentation. As online students, you're not going to be presenting live. If there is a live, there is an on-campus version of this course in which all the students have to stand in front of the stu other students and present live, but you guys as online students are going to create a pre-recorded version. So you're going to record your audio. Everybody has to have audio. So if you're afraid of speaking out loud, that's one of the things that you might want to try to work out of your system. No one's going to get a pass. But uh, we will be uh, speaking out loud and recording our voices for the presentations. And then we're going to attach slides to those. So we're going to make pre-made pre presentations that, that uh, can be sent around. And uh, uh, you're going to do that completely in week three. And then when you finish it, you're going to receive feedback on it and then have a chance to revise it and make it even better in week four. So that's the plan for the entire month. This week, I want you to try to get the reading done because the reading is very, very helpful. 
in doing the main assignment. And uh, I'm going to talk about the assignments right now. So uh, let's go back to the browser. Uh, so before I start talking about the discussion for this week, uh, let me open it back. Do we have any questions? I know I ran through a lot of stuff. I know I was talking fairly fast, but uh, does anybody have any questions? Did I lose anybody? Did, uh, is this something you wanted to ask that you didn't get a chance to, to ask? Everything okay? All right, so I'm gonna go on to the discussion board. This week's discussion board, we want you to talk about what your previous history with presentations has been. What your uh, uh, comfort level is in doing them. How have you had success? Have you had you know, uh, less than success? Uh, are you interested in particular software? Are you interested in, in certain aspects of, of learning what you want to have to do and so forth? So uh, the discussion board is 1.3 and the task in the discussion board is that everyone has to create an initial post. An initial post is a post in which you create a larger post under your name and lay it up there and then a response post is re responding to another person. So uh, as we come down here, there is a completion box at the beginning, but it's easier to understand if you go straight on the discussion. So at the bottom of the 1.3 page, you can go straight into the discussion board, which is much easier to understand. And you'll see that I have created an initial post here that you guys can talk about and think about, but what I want each person to do is create an initial post by Wednesday night. Now, if you can't get it done by Wednesday night, then we can do the, uh, we can push it back later. But uh, again, in this case, if you can get it done by Wednesday, then we can take Thursday and Friday off for Thanksgiving and, and uh, the day after Thanksgiving and so forth. And then uh, you, you'll need to respond to two or others, two or more students. And I'd really like you to respond to more than two students. But uh, it, when someone has an initial post, you can come to, their, uh, to the bottom of their post and hit reply and make a comment. And that will attend to that student's initial post. So we want two replies from you by the end of the week. That would normally be Sunday. Now it's going to be Monday. So by mo next Monday night, you need to reply to two or more students. Don't forget the reply part, but the initial discussion by you should talk about your own personal history with presentations. Have you done them before? Have you ever had success? And I want you to consider that fairly widely. Don't just think about, did I use PowerPoint? But, uh, you know, uh, Working in sales can be a form of presentation. Uh, speaking in church can be a form of presentation. There are any kind of, of, of times when you might have had a chance to try to convince someone of someone or tell someone uh, and it's some information. And each one of those counts as a creative presentation. We are defining that very broadly here. We're not talking just about, did you use PowerPoint in a, in a high school class? So. Uh, tell us whatever you need to tell us. And in these discussion and in these reply posts, remember that we want to try to make as fruitful posts as we can. And we have something here called the RISE model. It stands for R-I-S-E, in which if you think about it, this is a way to engage in material. You're going to have discussions and which you have posts and replies for most of the classes that you have going forward. And we want those to be as useful and fruitful as possible. And so we don't like cursory replies in, in, the, in the replies, like great job, attaboy. Those are things that are nice to say, but they don't really extend the conversation. So RISE stands for reflect, inquire, suggest, and elevate. If you read this material if in, the, in this uh, little graphic here, Reflect means think about what someone wrote and 
reconsider and consider, you know, reflecting back upon it. Inquire means asking questions. It, think about what someone wrote and ask them a question that extends the conversation. Suggest means think about what someone wrote and offer responses that, that extend that conversation or offer solutions for things that they talked about. And finally, elevate. Read the posts and find ways to make the discussion broader, more um, high level, uh, talking in uh, 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 wider ideas and so forth. So anything that you can do to make these discussions more um, intellectually engaging is better. So you can, on this first page, write your post here and hit, hit the post button and uh, it will uh, create an initial post. Or on, once you're on the discussion page, if you write at the top, that creates an initial post with your name by it. And if you hit reply, that creates a reply post and you're replying to what someone else has said. So the instructions for this uh, assignment, we want you to have a uh, initial post up by Wednesday and two replies by next Monday night. Is that clear? And the final uh, thing that we're looking at here is 1.4 professional analysis presentation assignment. So here we want you to look at a series of presentations and we want you to write reviews of them. The presentations we want you to look at are from the TED Talks website. Now, if you haven't ever heard of TED, TED stands for Technology Education and Design. This is a company that holds conferences around the world. And instead of having one speaker that speaks a real long time, they engage several speakers who all give short, quick presentations. None of the TED Talks are longer than 20 minutes. They last between six and 20 minutes. And when they have conferences around the world, they have 20 speakers at a time. So they've been doing this for many, many years now. So on this website, there are over 3,600 different presentations that you can look at. And they're on all kinds of subjects. They just cover the gamut. These are some of the most intellectually interesting, engaging presentations you've ever seen. And there's a lot of them that deal with things in your field. So if you're interested in video gaming or you're interested in 3D animation, you can look that up. You can use the search engine tools to find things that are in your field. But I really want you to go as far afield as you can. I want you to try to use this time for looking at TED Talks to find some really out there and interesting materials. Uh, you really can't go wrong. Uh, and um, you have to watch a minimum of three. You have to pick three that you're gonna write about. So my suggestion is that you set aside half a day and just go down the rabbit hole and watch 10, 12, 20 of them. Can't do anything that make you smarter. And once you've watched a bunch, then you pick the three that you want to talk about. You know, uh, those of you who've seen a TED Talk and want to write about the one that you've already seen, you know, uh, push yourself. This is a chance you're in school. This is a chance to find and discover new things. So there's nothing but amazing stuff here. So uh, the videos themselves are on the website. Uh, if you pick one. Uh, now, the thing here is, we don't want you to review the topic. We want you to review the presenter. And that's why you need to have read all of the uh, five chapters of Nancy Duarte before you start this project. So I suggest that you start reading the um, Resonate material today, tomorrow, try to get it done by, by the weekend, and then work on this project on the weekend. Once you've finished all the reading, you will have a vocabulary for talking about how well each performer did his or her job. Because your job in these written reviews is to not review the topic, but to review the presenter. 
Tell us how well each one did his or her job and what they did to make it successful or not successful. If you don't like the way a performer did it, that's even better re reason to review it. But you need to tell us what they did that they was wrong or right. And the information you're going to use, the language you're going to use to talk about how well he or she did their job, it's going to come straight from those chapters of Resonate that uh, Nancy Duarte wrote. So we want you to, uh, if we come back to the instructions here, you're going to watch a minimum of three and pick three TED Talks. Now, we don't want you to do more than three TED Talks, so don't do four to show off or anything. Just pick three. And we want you to write a couple of paragraphs in review. And some of the questions you can ask or answer in those paragraphs are, why was this presentation powerful moving? Why did you like it? Uh, what made the content appealing? What made it relatable? How did the speaker draw you in? I really want you to focus in on what the speaker did right and wrong. Uh, what did you get out of the presentation that reading an article or a book would not have helped you? So these are some of the questions that you could ask. I want a two paragraph review of each one of the three different TED Talks. So you're going to review three different TED Talks. You're gonna write two paragraphs on each. And then at the final, you're gonna give me a list, a comprehensive list of 10 qualities, techniques, and or presentation skills that made the presentations you watched inspiring, captivating, creative, and effective. Essentially, I want you to compare the three titles together and find what commonalities they had and talk about qualities, 10 qualities that they shared. And this stuff is gonna come straight out of the Nancy Duarte reading. So, you know, if you wanna know where to come up with a list of 10 qualities, make sure you've done the reading and it's gonna be right there for you. Now I skipped step two. Step two is create a document for this assignment and include supporting images. This is something that stumps a lot of people, but you're doing a written assignment, but I want you to add pictures to it. In the same way that a magazine article is more interesting because it has images, your article is going to be more illuminating to us because it has images. Now, I'm not gonna judge you on layout or how pretty your pictures are or how many pictures you have. I'm gonna judge you on how well each picture helped me to understand what you've written. You're choosing images to help understand your writing. And this has a, this is, this has a, a clear analog in the way that slides work for a presentation. Slides are there to help me understand what you're saying as the speaker. And images in this article are here to help me understand what you've written as your review. So uh, you can use any Word document that you like to, to write this. Uh, and note that the school is giving everyone uh, free copies of Office 365. You can get them for Mac, Windows, Android, or iOS, uh, iOS iPhone, or iPad. Uh, and uh, this is a, a, a great deal that Microsoft has for students. And uh, it gives you a full four-year license to use the software. And uh, you can actually put it on two different devices. So you can put it on your computer right now. And then when you get a, a launch box in four months, you can put the Mac version on there and, and have that on the machines. But uh, one of the really cool things about the uh, the Microsoft licenses, this is a standard program that they have for students. They give everyone a four-year license to use their latest, greatest software for free. And most students take four years or more to go through school. You guys are gonna go through school in less than four years. So that means you're actually gonna have some extra time uh, using the latest version of Microsoft for free after you graduate because you're gonna get through uh, this in faster than the four years. Uh, but you don't have to use Microsoft Word. You can use Google Docs, you can use my, uh, Apple Pages, you can use Notepad or um, OCD or whatever you like. Um, uh, Word is probably the best thing to turn it in. Uh, if you, you can also do it as a PDF, but when you finish the file, you bring it back to the completion box, drop it on here, it will upload to the system. <coughs> and that's how 
we receive your homework. Now, if you're actually working on your phone, then you're, uh, you're, you don't have files on your phone, essentially. You are connected to the cloud. So when you work with Microsoft Office 365 on your uh, Android or iPhone device, you're gonna save that document to your cloud and then you're going to link the, 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 a link to the cloud to here. So that means that you don't have a file that you're uploading. So if you're working on a laptop, if you're working on a Mac or a PC, you're going to have an actual doc file that you can drag here and it'll upload. But if you're working on a mobile device, you just it'll send us the link to access your cloud uh, uh, device so we can see it there. And you can do that in the feedback or you can just put the link in a text file and upload that. But uh, I wanted to show you some examples of what I was looking at or what I'm talking about in terms of some of the uh, um, student projects. And again, I'm happy to share these with anybody. So anybody who wants to uh, see some of these can, uh, can just send me a note and I'm, I will I'll send out uh, uh, different files to anybody. But, here we see 10 qualities and you're not just listing qualities, but you're saying where they occur in the videos that you're watching. So you can see that other people have inserted images here and most of these images are going to come straight off the TED website. If I go back to the TED website and I click onto an image, you're going to see that the video that you watch is linked directly on every page here. Yeah. Lately, a lot of chief executives have promised to shift their business model. Turn off the audio here. But you can see that they, they all come with a uh, uh, closed caption if you want it uh, and so forth. And uh, you can actually make screen captures. So if I wanted to tab a screen capture of this speaker on my Mac, I can just, you know, make a screen capture by dragging and dropping and uh, the... Uh, Then I have a, a file here that I can just drag straight into Word and uh, use that to illustrate. So if you're wondering where do you come up with the images to put into your uh, uh, reviews, the answer is that for the most part, you're gonna do screen captures from that. Uh, if you are on a Windows machine and you need to make screen captures, you can usually get an, uh, an extension put onto your uh, Chrome browser if, if that helps. But again, um, there's no set rule on how many photos you want to put in. It's what you want, but the photos that you pick should help me to understand the articles better. Meaning that they're helping me to understand. Now, seeing a picture of the presenter is quite helpful. Seeing a clip from the video is quite helpful. You can also choose stuff from, from, uh, Google images, uh, if you want to, to use something. And when you use other people's images, we do want you to say where they came from. So you're gonna see that in the examples that I show you, we have uh, screen credits here. Now there's no um, real uh, uh, citation requirement. You know, Full Sail uses a certain style sheet for, for, but we're in month one. As long as you just say the images came from TED Talks, that's all we're concerned about. We just don't want you, uh, to use other people's images and not mention that, uh, that you're borrowing them, but you don't have to have any great uh, um, setup in terms of citing where the image came from. Just saying what it came, what website you took it off of is good enough. But we want you to put that information in the uh, uh, write-up as well. So anybody who wants to borrow any of, of these. Uh, set uh, examples I'm happy to share with you. Uh, just send me a note and I will send it to you. Clip art is fine. Any art that you want to use, uh, anything that, that you want to use visually that will help to understand what the, uh, uh, what you're saying is fine. And uh, you know, there's no set amount of images. So, you know, don't feel you have to go crazy and fill it full of 20. One or two or three images is fine. I just want you to make sure that you're using images in a way that helps explain and communicate. That's, that's really what I'm looking for. Um, and then 
once you upload it uh, again, due on Monday night of next week. Anybody got more questions? If you have questions, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can type them in the chat box. They are quite a bunch. All right, well, if you have any questions later in the week, I'm here all week. I'm again, looking for questions from you. So you feel free to ask me anytime. And you can ask me on the, uh, uh, each page. You know, at the bottom of each page is a feedback box. This comes directly to me. Uh, and so I will see it. I'll know it came from you. I'll know that it was attached to this page. So I have a context. So uh, throughout the entire FSO, there are feedback boxes on every single page that you're on. And you also have the ability to, to ask uh, feedback or to send feedback messages up here. So the system is designed to help you get a hold of me anytime you need me. Uh, again, my email is published. You can send me email if you like, and you have my text number. So anybody who needs to get a hold of me can. Uh, one last thing I'll mention is we have a Discord group for folks that like to use Discord. If you aren't familiar with Discord, you don't need to use it, but if you're already on Discord, it's a great way to hang out with your classmates. And uh, uh, you guys can uh, uh, go through some of the studying together. You can ask questions and uh, you can, uh, I monitor it so I can ask answer questions there and I can pass media back and forth. So um, anybody that wants the link to the Discord uh, channel, I'm probably gonna post it in announcements tomorrow. Uh, last chance for questions, or I'm going to let you guys go. I know I've had you here for a while, so I don't want to uh, extend that privilege, but uh, I want to give you as much information as you can. Anybody have any questions that uh, they still want to get answered? All right. Well, you guys have a great week. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, I'll be around all week. Even, you can even text me on Thanksgiving if you want. I'm not really doing anything special. And uh, again, uh, the, this week only, things are due on Monday instead of Sunday because of the holiday. Night, everybody.